Hello people, this is Ricky Jai. I'm in Trinidad and Tobago right now enjoying myself for Carnival 95. And when I'm in New York, I tune into the culture share. Because you know why? Hey, they're happening. <laughs> Ricky, like you don't tell a lie or what? Every <laughs> time I talk to you and you promise me something, you're always fulfilling that promise. Last year, tell me about the Indian soca and thing and yes. here we saw it tonight. Yeah man, um, you know, it's, it's my um, mission to, to keep doing new music, new style and letting people know the kind of music that Ricky Jai is going to produce. Um, something, um, you know, that's me. When time you hear the music, you say, hey, that's Ricky Jai. <laughs> it was a difference, and you were correct. There was a, a different mood on stage. And the color, magnificent. Well, who, who chose those colors? Well, um, this is traditional East Indian colors. It's called Teach me, you see that? Lal, Teach me. Lal Pilahari. This yellow. It's traditional. So wait, wait, Lal Pilahari means yeah. yellow? The, the yellow, the red, the green, that, that's everything about East Indian, the East Indian, authentic East Indian wear. Lal Pilahari, that's the, the name of the outfit. And, and tell us now about the, the song itself and what it's all about from beginning to end. Alright, well, the, the Indian dance, it, it, um, it, it was conceptualized about a year ago. I was doing the, the circuit and um, I saw an avenue for Ricky Jai to create his own space. I mean, we had the Iowa dance, we had the donkey dance, and I said, wait a minute, we could do the Indian dance. And um, I just took a line from, you know, last year we had this young boy from Point Fourteen, which is Preacher, uh -huh. you know, had everybody jumping and waving. But this year, I come in and knew something to keep the party going and everybody pumping, you know, so let me do the Indian dance, you know. And it's something that um, every Trinidadian, um, whether you're Indian, Negro, Chinese, white, at some point in time, you have to interact with Indian music and Indian culture. And hey, some point in time, everybody does this. I don't care how they do it, they do it. So it's, it's a song that's, it's nation, it's a nation building song. Party song, nation building. I am very interested now to see how it will take off in North America and Europe on that bigger and wider stage. I have a, a gut feeling it, it will be totally accepted, but the curiosity is still there. Okay, um, well, I hope so too, because um, this year I had a lot of problems with, um, with my record, it came out really late, and um, as a result, I've only gotten records like this week, so um, I'm, I'm also hoping that it will take the international market a lot better than what's been happening here. I brought up um, two points with the other Calypsonians a little earlier on today. In that, um, I know you said it for the past two years too, we are so preoccupied with the white man taking the culture, with the big recording companies taking the culture, right? But then, but then again, when you look, the people from the Windward and Leeward Islands, Trinidad, Barbados, Guyana, I'm not, even, I'm not mentioning Jamaica because, you know, culturally they are different, yeah. right? From um, Bermuda, the Bahamas, that has spread over North America and Europe. We're talking about millions of people who yeah. can identify with the music. If they were to purchase a record from each artist, boom, gone clear, totally clear. So, so is it a misconception that we have that that some people feel that like we're sitting and waiting on this glorious day? When MCA or somebody, it, um, and they are now dropping the dancehall artists. It is, it is, it is a misconception. Um, you know, the thing has to happen right here. Um, and we are, you know, like I told you in our last interview, you know, there are signs that the music is spreading. And um, if you have been following the reports out of Trinidad and Tobago, you will notice that um, Soka is in Japan, and it's not restricted to Aru. We have had top bands from Trinidad and artists performing in Japan. And that's a big, that, that, that's a milestone for the industry. Because once it gets there, you know, it, there's a possibility, okay, Europe, here we come. Asia, here we come. And our music is so happy. You know? Our music is so happy and, and people feel so good when they, when, when they listen to our music. That, you know. We, we, we are Boo Boo Taylor, Boo, top yes. promoter. Yes, Respect. yes, yes. Yes, on the side. Eh. Anyway. Respect Boo Taylor, one of the ambassadors of Flying uh -huh. the Culture Flag. Right. Yeah. So but, as I um, say, you realize that, um, because for instance, when you look at people like Sparrow and Calypso Rose, they have survived in the art form because they have created a market within our own people right. across North America and Europe. Um, they are living examples that um, our, our music should not be carnival based. The Mighty Sparrow and Rose, Calypso Rose, 
have demonstrated that they don't need to be in Trinidad, they don't need to, um, to have a carnival song. They have Calypso music. And the power of Calypso music is such that they can be anywhere in the world and people appreciate Calypso music. You know what I'm saying? So when I see the Mighty Sparrow on tour, I'm happy. Because I know that we're going to just follow wherever the birdie goes. <laughs> Jai, let me say it's been a pleasure one more time chatting with you, right? Yeah, man. Respect all the time. And we catch up the road. Yeah, man. All right. Thank you very much. Good.